story. I will tell you, this is not a children's story that I wrote. It's one that I heard that to me was just so wonderful I had to bring it back to everybody else. This is about a story about Grandma Maria. Grandma Maria Colon lived down in Maya West, uh, Puerto Rico. She was the first Seventh-day Adventist in their family. And nobody else in the family practiced, but she loved people, she loved Jesus, and she wanted to spread that joy. Grandma lived in a big house, and in the basement, Grandpa, he ran a furniture factory. So all day in the basement, there were saws and hammers and machines running and paint sprayers. And Grandma was upstairs doing her favorite thing, which was cooking, and she wanted, she loved to cook. And the house always smelled wonderful. And every time somebody would go by and smell that, she would invite them in for a glass of water or to give them a meal. But she loved people and she wanted to spread her, her joy of Jesus with others. But the family was not ones that were readily accepting it. Grandma was the only Adventist Christian in the family, like I said. And it really was hard for her. When family worship time came around, she invited members of the family to come up and have worship with her on the porch for singing and Bible study. Sometimes people would come, but most times Grandma was out on the porch alone. But she wasn't alone because she had Jesus, and she had her two parents. Her parents' name was Susie and Peppy. They were parents and they were in a cage up there. And she would sing songs, she would sing her favorite song, which was Holy, Holy, Holy. And she would repeat Bible phrases with the parents there. And she would sometimes say to them, prepare sinner because Jesus is coming soon. So she would be out there and she would repeat sermons to the birds and she would spend, that was how she used to do her worship. But Peppy and Susie were kept in a cage at the top of the stairs above the basement. And they had one worker down in the basement. His name was Carlos. And Carlos was kind of lazy. He would cut one board, and then he'd quit with the board. And he'd take a break and go off. But Peppy and Susie were really smart birds. Because as soon as the noise in that portion of the basement got quiet, which meant Carlos wasn't doing anything, they would yell out, Carlos, get back to work. And they scolded him. Well, Carlos in the basement didn't like, didn't like these birds. And one time he got really angry, so he snuck up the steps and he opened the cage door. And it was really trying to get rid of the birds. Well, a funny thing happened. Early the next morning, one of the neighbors awoke to voices outside their window. And the voices were saying, Holy, 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 prepare, sinner, the Lord is coming. And of course, the neighbor lady ran outside because she wanted to find out where these voices were coming from and who was saying this to her. And she got outside and there were other neighbors that were outside, standing around. And she said, the neighbor lady said, did you hear what I heard? And they were all like, yeah. Well, Grandma heard it all of a sudden, too. And she came out of the house. And she was talking to them. And she happily announced to these people that her parents were probably up in the tree there. But soon, Peppy and Susie were put back in their cage. That left Grandma the opportunity to explain to the neighbors why the birds were saying what they were saying and why they were saying what they were saying. And some of the neighbors wanted, told Grandma, they said, we want to learn more about the Bible. So Grandma started with Bible studies, and some of them actually accept Jesus and, and got baptized. But the neat part about this is, you know, if Peppy and Susie would tell people about Jesus, 
And they were just repeating words. They didn't know what they were saying, but they were just repeating words. How special it is that we, who know Jesus and love Jesus, have that same opportunity to share their love of Jesus and share the joy of Jesus with individuals which we know the man. We're teaching them about somebody we know. So this is an opportunity that we have as Christians, as people who love Jesus, to share it. If a parent can do it without knowing what he's saying, how much more important does the message have coming from somebody who knows Jesus and sharing from his knowledge? So this kind of goes along with the thunder in the Holy Land. You have the opportunity, very little to start with, is to share Jesus and say, hey, can I pray for you? Is there something I can pray for you? So let's take this opportunity to just Thank mm -hmm. you.